<laughs> you know the vibes! Welcome back to another episode of the Hoop Genius Podcast, brought to you by NBA 2K25. If you heard yesterday's episode, you will know that you need to hit the link in our description and pre-order your copy of NBA 2K25. Not only do you get the game, you get bonus things that will be in the game for you, and you also get 12 months free of NBA League Pass. And if you listen to this podcast, I'm guessing you love watching NBA, so you may as well get a free NBA League Pass, save yourself the 200 bucks or whatever it may cost, and get one for free, and support the show by hitting the link in our description. It's myself, Mo, and here alongside me as always. The man who now wants to be on the board that decides player ratings at NBA 2K, Mr. BJ Armstrong. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm going to be on. It, it, the call has already been made, so I'm going to be on. I'm in. I'm in. I'm okay. In. Okay. And the uh, GM extraordinaire who, in NBA 2K, you have the My GM mode where you can be the NBA franchise's GM, and we're going to put that to the test this okay. season. But we got a real-life GM in Mr. Scott Perry. Scott, how are you? I'm doing great, Mo. Hey, um... I got to bring something up, though, before we get started on this top 10 list. Okay, okay. I wake up this morning and, uh, you know, go to my Instagram and I see some highlights <laughs> from Springfield, Massachusetts. Uh, one individual, you know, some, but, you know, where in the world uh, I have played basketball? This is Mo Mootsy. I find out mm -hmm. and you know they, they they you know show him travel around but he's landed in Springfield at the Hall of Fame wow. and Jay I'm watching Mo and he's backing people down in the video. oh yeah <laughs> Shoot, shooting off the glass off the window you know like he was at, <laughs> I'm old school with it I've been yeah. telling you I said so yeah. you know what is is he an undersized Adrian Dantley Mark Aguirre is that what he's trying to tell us you know he did <laughs> take people to the post I, I said, okay. <laughs> you know the kid Scott you know the kid Scott used to play for the Memphis Grizzlies Roddy yes David Roddy David Roddy, David Roddy. Yeah, that's that's yeah. Mo I, I that's swear Mo. that's Mo. <laughs> should Don't I tell you my? The NBA. <laughs> should, should I tell you who I think of how I play? I think of Glenn Big Baby Davis. I think of <laughs> Boris Diaw. I think of Henny Lofton Jr. Those are the kind of people I can be compared to now. <laughs> in my prime i was looking guys up on the perimeter i was on a marcus smart type build but now okay i'm an okay. old head i'm an old head i'm slow okay. now so yeah, yeah. Okay. i'm gonna take you down right. to the block i'm gonna take you down to the block and bj yes. you know you say uh you, you say one of your favorite quotes is george gervin having a shot for every occasion yeah you gotta have a shot i, I got a counter for everything the defense can throw at me oh okay i'm playing chess okay. down there i'm yeah, playing but, chess okay. down yeah, there yeah moat 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 <laughs> Mo was telling telling the guy he's playing against. He said, "The bank is open all the time when you play against me, even on <laughs> even, even, even on the weekends. Seven days a week <laughs> after I was, exactly seven days a week." Hey, 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 hey Scott, said, Scott. Hey, <laughs> about, a, about a year ago, Scott. About a year ago, we made a deal that Mo was going to play and get ready for the the the, the celebrity game at All Star Weekend, and okay. Mo guaranteed us he was going to get thirty. Okay. And we still wait. I'll see you in San Francisco in February. Okay. okay. That's it. That's okay. okay. As long you as get it. me in the game and I'm a deliver. Okay. Wait a minute. Hey, hey, hey. You're, you're a celebrity. You're, you're everywhere. You know? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I'll make the call to Adam Silver. I'll have to make the call, but uh, I'm ready. As, as long as you're ready for um, uh, 10 of those points to be from hook shots, 10 of them to be from fadeaways and the other 10 from the free throw line, we ready for it. Okay. okay. Like I said the other great. day, ain't no one know how to guard the post no more. That's the hidden yeah, treasure. Yeah. Every, everyone's worried about stopping threes. I ain't worried about shooting yeah. threes. Yeah. But speaking <laughs> of excellent basketball players, if I do say okay. so myself, we have the top 10 players ranked by NBA 2K25. Oh, wow. Well, okay. Now, I'm going to read out the top 10, and then we're going to dive into it. But I'm okay. just going to read it out. And yesterday, you both told me that Victor Wembanyama and Jalen Brown deserve to be in the top 10. So I'm going to give you the 10 names and you're going to tell me which two shouldn't be in the top 10. Are you ready? Let me correct you on that. Like I said, I'm telling you that Victor Wimbanyama is going to be there one day. Be, you know, no, BJ partner, said he's, he's already BJ's top five. Very, yeah, he's top five. BJ's yeah, going to find a name in that top he's five. He's got to win a little out. more for me. He's going to be there. So uh, for me, Jalen Brown would be the one from mm. that list yesterday. Mm -hmm. But you okay. know that you got to try to find a home. Well, but anyway. Here we go. Let's go. 
At number 10, Anthony Davis is rated a 94 overall. Also a 94 overall at number nine is Kevin Durant. At number eight, we've got the cover star, Jason Tatum. He's a 95 overall, as is Stephen Curry, who's number seven, LeBron James, who's number six. And now we get to the top five. And it's pretty interesting because it's an all international top five. And number five is Joel Embiid, who's a 96 overall. And number four is Shea Gilgis Alexander, who's a 96 overall. At three, actually, let's, let's do it this way. BJ, can you guess the order of the top I have, three? I, you you no, know I who the players ahead. are. They're top three. international superstars. Can you guess the order so of you these got, three guys? You got Giannis, Jokic, Joker. Yeah, Luca. No, Joker, no, Giannis, you said Joker Luka twice, Joker. but you meant Luca. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Giannis, yeah, yeah. Luka, yeah. Giannis, Luka, and Joker. Giannis, Luca, and, and Joker. And Joker. So if, if you had to rank Giannis, uh, the Joker, and Luka Doncic in order, overall, who's getting that number one spot? Give me them in, in the order. Based on last year, based on last year, I would, that's the order. I would have it, just, like, just how it is. Based on last year. So, so the way 2K have it, is Giannis at three, 97 overall. Yes. Luca at yeah. two, and Jokic yes. at one. All three of them yeah. 97 that's what, overall. Yeah, that, yeah that's, what, that's, how I would, that's how I would have it right now. Yeah. You agree with that, and Scott? I agree with that, and Shea was at four, correct? That's right, that's right. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's, it's interesting because, you know, BJ, you, you are one of Giannis's biggest fans in the world, yeah. and I feel like mm -hmm. him being yeah. absent from the playoffs these past two seasons I, has kind of got him flying under the radar a little bit now. Let, let me let me step back from last year, and you know I love Giannis. I might have Shea three, Giannis four, Ooh. just on availability. Mm -hmm. we talked about the importance of that, mm -hmm. and I thought I thought Shea was excellent. And you know, and you guys have heard me say here that he's my early favorite going into next year for MVP. So um, I might move. I might switch those two. Uh, just based on last season and availability and the accomplishments of their team, you know, I just thought that uh, man Shea was phenomenal last year and, and had the best team in the Western Conference. Um, can score at will, when you, and you, especially when you're talking about playing a game like, and obviously, you know, Giannis is can score himself, but I think Shea is is probably the more pro prolific scorer, and you know, Giannis can be the more impactful defender. He's taller, longer, but, you know, Shea's not bad himself, so. Absolutely. BJ, I want to know, though, which two names in the, which name in that top five is being replaced by Victor Wembanyama? Embiid, Shea, Giannis, Luka, Jokic. M M Embiid. Embiid gets just on the uh, top five. Just, just on availability. Okay. Just on availability. Just, you have to be available. Joel is, listen, if Joel is healthy, he is perhaps, perhaps, right? You could make an argument, the most dominant player, unstoppable player yes. in the in, in the entire NBA. But you got to be available to do it. We're, we're, this isn't about talent. This isn't about like, no, you have to be available. Jo, when JoJo is available, no questions. Unfortunately, he hasn't been available. That's just, that's, and... Listen, we all want to see him. Well, I can't say we all. Everyone except Mo, because Mo says that he he flops all the time, mm. right? I want to see him. The rest of us, mm -hmm. I want to see him out here playing because he is just he's just a dominant force. You can't stop him. Mm -hmm. So, but because of that, I got to I got to put Wimbenyama there. Wimbenyama is just. I mean, he's he's there. He's 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 in my okay. top five. Okay, and and then Scott, which player is coming out of the top ten to make space for Jalen Brown? That's a tough question. And no, it's a very tough question in, in the back end of, of the five. And, and look, I've got a tremendous amount of respect for Anthony Davis, and he played a lot last season. But still, uh, what Jalen Brown accomplished, I might you know have. Brown at 10 and, and Davis at 11 mm -hmm. based on last season. Well, let me ask you a question then about real life because Anthony Davis did play a lot of games last season, but mm -hmm. previously he's had a number of injuries. Exactly. As yeah. a general manager, right? Say you were the 
GM of the Lakers and his contract's expired and you're looking to give him the max contract or whatever it might be. How far back do you go when it comes to injury history? Because for example, like Stephen Curry was injured a lot throughout the start of his career and then he became readily available. So when you look at a player like Anthony Davis, he's just showed you that he can play almost the entire season and, and the playoffs, but in previous years, he hasn't shown that. How would you evaluate that as a, as a GM? First of all, you, you're going to look at the guy's current age. Okay. Whatever he is. What is Anthony Davis now? You're saying he's, he's got to be in his thirties now, right? 30. Is he about 30? Yeah. He's 31. 31. Okay. So you look at um, the last three to four years for sure. Now, yeah, to your point, this was a great year for him in terms of available games that he could play, you know, that he was healthy, but still part of his recent history out of years, the couple of years prior to that too. So there's a concern. I don't care what anybody says when you look at him. He, I mean, look, nobody's questioning his talent. He has max talent ability. Nobody's, I'm not questioning that. Uh, I don't think anybody in basketball would. However, I like said, but you asked me as a GM, that is the biggest question that you, and you're going to want to protect yourself because as he gets older, he's not, in my opinion, he's not going to have start running off string of games that he's going to be available 75 games every year to, to 82 games. I just don't see that. I, I haven't seen a lot of that. Steph, when you mentioned Steph Curry, he had that early in his career. He was having trouble with his ankles. And that probably, you know, lasted with him till he was around, I don't know, 26 years old. Was it? Yeah, like and 2015, then, he started getting healthy before that run. To get, yeah. And so now he's been on a nine year run where he's been one of the more healthier players in the league. It doesn't miss a lot of time. So in Anthony Davis's career, we really haven't seen a string at any point of his career that he's run three, four seasons where he's played close to 82 games in a row. So uh, that's definitely going to be a concern. It's not just him, you know, you know, we talked about Joel Embiid. I mean, look, you figure out that because they're so talented, you figure out a way to keep them. But as they get up there in age, you're going to start seeing teams, you know, either put more language in their contracts. You know, Joel Embiid's first big contract had a lot of uh, stipulations and language in it in terms of games played to be able to, you know, in terms of guaranteeing money in his contract. Um, and so that it will be, um, you know, a concern. It has to be. If you're going to be financially prudent and in, in putting a team together, uh, that has to be taken into account because, You've heard this saying many a times, the number one ability is availability. I don't care what the guys, you know, can do or has done his potential and all those kind of things. Is he going to be available to play enough games to impact your ball club in terms of wins and losses and put you in a position to compete deep into the playoffs, if not get to a championship? So, uh, no, I, I'm, uh, I am big on that, have always been big on that. And uh, that's, a, that's one of the more important things for me as an executive is what that guy's longevity, uh, what he has shown in that department. And then obviously it's a projection moving forward because anybody can you know get hurt moving forward. But past history uh, plays a big role in, in, in that department for me. Well, Scott, as a as a GM, let me ask you a, a fun question. Can you guess what BJ Armstrong's rating is in NBA 2K? <laughs> in terms they have, of the they have all the historic eight. teams. They have all the historic teams. So he's got a rating so, out of 100. Uh, out of 100. Oh, I'm going to say that they had BJ at about an 87 or 6. See? This is how I know you secretly be playing the game. Because BJ no, Armstrong <laughs> is, in fact... 87 overall on the all-time Bulls team, according to this he's, he's website that I'm looking at. <laughs> BJ, would you like to know some of the current players who were ranked 87 <laughs> overall? Sure. So this sure. is exactly. this is if we were to put you in a time machine and bring the best version of you from your career to today, this is who you okay. would be compared to. Okay. Jamal Murray, DeMar oh. DeRozan, Drew oh. Holiday, 
Oh, stop, 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 stop right there. Stop. Just stop. <laughs> uh, I'll just take those three. And then, uh, yeah. I'll just take those three. I didn't hear, I didn't hear the fourth guy you did. The, uh, that's, that's pretty good. That's, that, that is yeah. pretty good. That's, so that's your rating on the all-time Chicago Bulls team. So that's like the best ever each player from their best oh, ever wow. season. On the 1992-93 Bulls, you are a 79 overall. That was still quite early okay. in your career. Uh, okay. But if I had to ask you, which year do you think was the best year of your career, personally? Which year would you say? I, I have no I, I Honestly, I don't know. Like, not mean, in terms of team success, in terms of your abilities. When do you feel like you're at the peak of your powers? You know, I don't know. I, didn't, I never had like a, a stretch where... I would, my role was defined. Like when I say defined, it was like, okay, it's, you know, some years I had to come off the bench. Some years I was a facilitator. Some years, I, I don't know. I, I really don't know. Hey, I never hey, put together. Hey, Mo, Mo, I never I, put Mo, every... can, can I, can I answer that Mo? See, go ahead, go ahead. My, my, my friend is being, the, you know, you know, see, see I know what. No, I, I, see, know I really, like, I can't. See, I know I can't, the answer yeah. too. <laughs> hey, hey, I, hey, the year that MJ decided to go play baseball. Yep. Nine four. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. And and, I, and what that was, and, and I know BJ and the rest of his te teammates did not want to see MJ leave, but once he decided to leave, there was a lot know, of shots. I know this man. The <laughs> first thing that went in this man's <laughs> mind was, "Oh, there's more shots available now." <laughs> so, Ray, check it out. <laughs> so bro, I'm willing to bet that was his best year yeah, statistically. And, that was he made the made, team. and he made the All Star he team shot too. Forty four percent from downtown that nah, year. Exactly. Yeah. Eighty six percent of his free throws. He was getting averaging a steal a game, four assists to go with it, fifteen yeah, points. See, <laughs> see this. Uh, see, uh, I, uh, I, uh, you know, I, I had a little inside information on that one. Just, yeah, yeah, I've, known yeah, him, you know, I've known him again. all his life, so I just know hey, hey. that. <laughs> hey, 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 there's a line. There's a line that we all always used to say coming up. <laughs> Minutes. Plus shots, shots equals players. Equals players. <laughs> <laughs> so hey, that's it. Hey, so that's what happened well, that season. <laughs> I, I, I want to say it was an unexpected role that I didn't. I didn't, ex I didn't expect that role. See, I didn't. I didn't trade. I didn't trade in the summer bowl knowing that I was going to have those shots available to me. So, you know, <laughs> well, what's, what's the one thing you say every day when when, when I ask you if you're ready for the show? Yeah, What's uh, the one right. thing you say I when I say you ready? ready. I, I stay ready. I stay ready. So I never have to get ready. But vote. I was ready for the vote, though, guys. <laughs> <laughs> hey, vote. I was ready. I was ready just in case. But Okay, well, well let's see if you're ready for this, though. Let's see if you're ready for okay. this, though. Seeing as you want to be involved with the rankings. I want from you your list of top 10 players. The BJ Armstrong top 10 in order from 10 to 1. Or you could start at one and go to ten if you want, if that's easier. Okay, right now, just just on basketball, right? Just going just into this season, going into yeah, this season, in. yeah, just coming in on this season, right? Yeah. Not not my my my. I'm and I say my 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 personal list, just on based on the integrity of the game, right? The integrity. Yeah, yeah. If, of if the you're game. starting a new franchise yeah. and you could bring in any players you want, who's the top ten? You know what I mean? Oh, well, if I could bring that, in that's player, a different. That, so, well, you're going to try to win a championship this season. When, so oh, just because you, you said you know, if no, we're not doing a franchise. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. If, yeah. if you said starting the franchise, then you know, I, I yeah, know that's a different it, question. Then you go in, yeah, but no, no, no. Yeah. Like you, you're trying to win a championship this season. That's what this is about. You want to win, oh, so you want the best players. Yeah. Well, if we're say okay, if I'm trying to start and win a a championship, okay, I you know you you know who my you know who I, my first guy would be? It's Victor. That, that'd be my Number first one. guy. Yeah, you, you said if I'm trying to win a championship you, this year. Maybe I heard you wrong. It was two different questions here, right, Scott? Did I hear two different questions? Yeah, I yeah, he, he but he, yeah, I, I I heard it the way you heard it first, but he clarified it by saying winning the championship. Yeah, the championship this year. So basically this year. You're just yeah, building yeah. a team for yeah, this. Yeah, it doesn't matter about next year, yeah, it's just yeah. this year right this now. Year, okay, year. yeah. Yeah, just yeah. I, I I'm going Victor. I'm 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 going Victor. I'm building based on, you know, if I'm trying to build a championship, because I know how, the style that I want to play. Mm. The, the second player, okay, and and my team will always be built around defense, right? So is that I, Victor I, number I, one or number 10? Victor is number one. Okay, okay. Uh, the, the second player is Giannis. Mm-hmm. Okay. 
uh, and number two. If I'm trying to, if I'm trying to build, if I'm trying to win, right? I'm trying to win. A, I'm trying to win a championship. Yeah. Okay. Number three is going to be the Joker. Mm-hmm. Number four, I got to put the big fella in B. He's got. He, he's got. He's. He, so I take that back. Number four, I'm gonna put Shea. Yeah. You got to factor who's still going to be healthy by the time the playoffs come around. That's what I'm saying. I'm, I'm gonna put Shea four. Number five, I got to go with the big fella. That's just that's just a talent. I got. I got. I got to. If all works well, I know I got the best. I got a player who can play in that game. Number five. Okay. Uh, number six, I got to go. I'm going to go Luca. Mm-hmm. Seven, I'm going to go. I'm going to go Tatum. Eight, I'm going to go. I'm going to go Ant Man at eight. Oof. Okay. Okay. Big. Nine. Um, this year, nine. Ooh, nine and ten is gonna be tough. Yep, there's there's three names that are quite high up the top ten. The older oh, players. Oh, oh, to, to, you got Luke ten. I'm going Jalen. Ten. I'm going Jalen Brown for sure. Okay. So ten. Nine. I'm going Jalen Brown. So you can choose between Steph, Katie, and LeBron for number nine. Or anyone oh, else? Uh, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna go I'm gonna go I'm gonna go KD the uh, KD yeah. So go I already KD. know when we put this clip on Instagram, they're gonna be mad that you didn't put LeBron in your top ten. Can you explain why? At his age, at his age right now, like I I don't I don't think that's fair to LeBron right now to be able to say at 40 years of age, I'm gonna ask him to carry me 82 games. That's the, that that, that's the big thing. That's the big thing. If you were talking, that, about, if you, if you could, why, if you could, if you could put a hyper, put, hi, go straight to the playoffs. To the playoffs. The less yes. the list would be different. There you go. Yeah, LeBron yeah, yeah. plays in the in the in Olympics. He can do it for short stretches. He just can't do it eighty two plus sixteen anymore. That's not fair to him. That's not a fair assessment. You're saying right now, I can't ask LeBron James without me managing his minutes. To get him through an 82 game schedule, to play significant minutes, meaning he's got to play 30 to 35 minutes. By the way, we got to practice. And then carry my team to 16 wins. No, that's not not at this, not at this stage of his career. Now, mm-hmm. can he show flashes? <laughs> Absolutely. Just like he showed in the Olympics. And he can do it in stretches. If you just said, LeBron, you stay, you take off, like Scott just said, into the playoffs, then that's a different category. That's a different discussion. That's not fair to him at this stage of his career. Mm-hmm. And out of respect to what he has done in his career, because clearly when he is when he was at that age, which he extended it well beyond just a traditional stretch for most. He could do that. I I don't I, I can't do that to him. That's not fair to him right now. Mm-hmm. It's just that, and, and and you and if you're putting together a team, you have to take that into consideration with where he's at in his career. That's just that's just what it is right now. And if you didn't do that, then to me, that's being irresponsible to think that I can play him 35 minutes at this stage of his career, and then no, it, it, I can't do that. Mm-hmm. So you might get. Push back, which is fine. Yeah, but but the truth of it is, that's where it's at. <laughs> that's mm-hmm. what it is right now. Mm-hmm. That's just what it is. So that Absolutely. was my reasoning for that. And then, otherwise, I I I, I think that's a good list. The only other guy that I was considered to, on that list is you know before you know when he was suspended and all that. I thought John Morant was really. Mm-hmm. Coming in. I See, thought he I, was really coming I in. I thought about and, this the and, other day. What if I said, I think Jar can go for MVP this year? Oh, well, it is possible. Look, I mean, if he's healthy and he plays 80 games this year, his talent will put him in the conversation. Because I think yeah, more than anything. Now, it's, now, it's just going to be interesting to see him get his, his timing, his rhythm back. How long does it take that? 
to happen. Right. He come out, I, I, he's I basically just think, had a like, good year and a year and a half. The, the expectations yeah. of like you're expecting Shea to do what he does. You're expecting Luca. Mm-hmm. You know the expectations there is for him to get back to the finals. You're expecting Jokic to do what he does. You know you're expecting Tatum to respond to what happened over the summer. But John Morant, it feels like everyone's forgotten about him, and those expectations aren't there. So he could mm-hmm. be a dark horse for the MVP race this season. It could be. No, no one doubted. And, and 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 again, because I love defense. I you know I, I'm I'm if I'm going to build a championship, I'm going to be able to stop the other team because you can't win a championship. You know, and and, and Scott has won a championship. Mo, and you're going to build a team. One of the things that you have to do if you're going to win a championship, you have to get a stop late in the game. So, so let me ask you this. Because- so I, I'm going to say this, and then I'll, uh, yeah, Evan Mobley to me, as a center, I think he's a championship caliber player. Just okay. because defensively, I think he could be elite, especially in today's game, because you can he can switch screen roles. Well, let's, I don't let's think hope he gets out of Cleveland because they've just re-signed Jared Allen. So we're not going to see him as a center for the next four years. Well, I, I think that was a good <laughs> No, he's... Well, he, unless unless, unless, they're unless, gonna, they, unless they trade him. They're going to trade. I think, yeah, they're gonna, yeah. I, think that is, I think that is a good move for them to sign him because now, as they would say, Scott knows the terminology. It gives him cap flexibility. <laughs> and, 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 you know, and it's, 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 it's a cap-friendly contract. It's a contract yes. that... Given his ability, given his character, that you can move that contract. Could, yeah, you know? right. So now yes. again, I don't know where they stand with that. You know, uh, again, right. the head coach there, the new head coach Kenny Atkinson, was really pivotal in in uh, Jared Allen's early development. In he was an all star with him. Yes, mm-hmm. and so you know, my guess is he's going to want to, you know, at least start out with him and really see how he's doing, where he's at, because again, there's, I, I know coaches like working with players that understand them, know their system and, and, and vice versa. So it, it'll be interesting to see if, and when they get to that point that BJ is talking about so, potentially trading them and then, and putting Evan Mobley at, at that. At the five. I've system. just got one, one question then BJ for your top 10 list. When I look at the list, Nine of your ten players we know can can play defense. There's just one name in there that we've seen him play defense for one game in the NBA Finals, mm-hmm, the only game mm-hmm, his mm-hmm, team won, mm-hmm. and that's Luka Doncic. How would you, mm-hmm. if you were running the team, how would you convince him to buy in and play defense on a nightly basis? Well, there, there's no convincing. I have to be able. Look, here, here's 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 one of the most valuable lessons I learned as an NBA player. We had a guy who averaged 32 points a night, 32 a night. And then minus that 32, the following year, we won more games without him in the regular season. Luca, this is your decision. We can't win without getting a stop. (laughs) We, We can't win. So the one thing that I've learned in constructing a team is that you better have a team that can absorb whatever happens during the course of the year and give yourself a chance to win. That's a Luca. Luca has to realize the following. If you want to win a championship, you got to do three things. You got to defend, you got to rebound, and you got to share the ball. Now, he gets what, – what did he average last year? 30 what? He's at 31, I think. Wasn't he at 31 okay. points, Mo? Yeah. Okay. Last year, Luca Dante. Uh, so I'll, pull up, I'll pull up all the numbers right now. Uh, Luke averaged what last year? There's no convincing. There's no convincing. This is this is what it is. This isn't a mm-hmm. this isn't a convince. If I got to convince you, thirty four. He yes, averaged thirty four. Oh, thirty four, so nine, and ten. Okay, so if I got to convince you to win a championship, then that's probably not a championship caliber team. <laughs> okay, yeah. I'm convincing you. Hey, Scott. Hey man, you got to do this or else we won't win. You're like, no, nah, I don't, I don't, I don't feel like doing that. Mm-hmm. Well, that that's not what it is. Everyone's got to be committed with a unified thought. This is what we're doing here. And everybody's got to do what they got to do. I'm not asking you to sacrifice. I'm asking you to average 36 if you can. I'm asking you to average 40. I don't believe in that philosophy of sacrificing. No, just give me, give me what what's needed to get the job done. 
That's what that, that's I don't I don't I'm not I'm not buying into the sacrificing thing. Oh man, I got to mm-hmm. sacrifice for the better the team. No, if we play in defense, we're gonna get more possession. If we play in more defense, hey Scott, if we play a good defense, there's less plays called. Hey, we play defense because we didn't want to have a run to set offense. And Scott knows Mm -hmm. I love offense. (laughs) Mm -hmm. But Mm -hmm. my greatest motivation, hey, I got a better chance playing (laughs) with a guy who averages 30 points a game on a three on on three on one break than we running a a set play for him in the Mm -hmm. half court. Because the set play, I know I wouldn't get in the ball. He might pass (laughs) me the ball on the three and one break (laughs) because he couldn't get there. (laughs) 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 No. Hey, 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 hey! By the way, that that those fifteen points a game, I didn't have a play the entire year. <laughs> <laughs> Bo, I average double figures in this league without a play. I, I played my it. whole career without a play. There was no set play where I had an ISO. There was no set play where this is his shot. So I learned that I had to play defense. To do two things. One, I had to give myself a chance to win. That was my commitment. Two, because I love to play and I like to put the ball in the basket. You know, George Gervin said it. You know, you gotta, hey, you gotta move the scoreboard. So mm-hmm. how could I get involved? I had to play defense to do it. I had to. So Luca, I want you to average 40 a night. I want you to average 40. 40. Average 45 if you can. But how can we do that without getting extra possessions? Well, we got to get steals. We got to get out in transition. We got to get as many uncontested shots as we possibly can. That's how you win. That's how you win in this league. If you're taking tough shots, you should, in theory, you should shoot a lower percentage. Shooting contested shots as, as compared to uncontested shots. So, I, I I I I would. That, that's what I. That's what I would do. Hey, let's get out and do it. The mm-hmm. ball is going to find the best player's hands, no matter what. Absolutely. Well, we'll be back with more tomorrow, talking about the NBA. In the meantime, make sure that you pre-order <laughs> your copy of NBA Two K Twenty Five and subscribe to the show, YouTube, Spotify, Apple, or wherever you get your podcast <laughs> from. That's all for myself, eighty seven Ray, Mister B J Armstrong, and Mister Scott Perry. Uh, Exactly. Oh, yeah. <laughs> hey, 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 Mo, when, when you tell, tell the audience to get buckets tonight, I want you to tell them to get buckets off the window, off the game. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, well, it's funny because we recorded the show today on, on Monday, the Monday, the what, 26th, and it was what we call a bank holiday here in the UK. Oh, okay. Because okay. It's, a, it's a day where everything's closed. All the banks are closed. All the shops are yeah. closed. The bank holiday don't apply to me. Exactly. <laughs> Just know where I live, there ain't no bank holidays. They, exactly. Because the bank stays open every exactly. day. <laughs> and much like me in my Instagram video. Until next time, get buckets. <laughs>